Hello guys and welcome to a new Still Division video today by me Vulcan. Today I have for you game one of the best of three between Nicholas Frick and Metallic. And this is round one of the great Paradox Tawny. So this is the last best of three series that we have in round one. And then we'll be moving on to the round two games, which will be really, really interesting to watch because we'll start to see some of the better players uh, go up against each other. And that should lead to some awesome replays. So very much looking forward to that. And hopefully you guys are too. And uh, just moving on with the tournament in general is nice to see. So here we are on Odon today. And Nicholas Frick's going to be taking out the third Canadian infantry on the allied side. And on the Axis side, we have Metallic with the 716th. So he's already in my good books for this one. But we'll have to see how he does. Now, in general, I would say that the third Canadian counter the 716th quite hard, especially in phase B. And the reason I say this is because of things like 25 pounders and sextons. Um, sextons are especially hard to deal with with the 716th. Um, just because you don't really have much that can counter battery it very well. Now, in one of an up, like one of the updates recently, they did add some longer range artillery pieces for the 716, so it allows you to counter battery the sextons, but you're never going to actually kill them because they are armored. So the most you're ever going to do is panic them, and as soon as those two and then three star sextons start firing back at you, you're going to be kind of screwed. So. That's something that will be interesting to see how Metallic deals with uh, that, basically. Anyway, um, Nicholas Frick is actually going to be using what looks like a 25 pounder at the start of the game. We also have a bunch of infantry at the top side with command infantry. Looks like stormtroopers as well and a 2-inch carrier. That's another thing that's going to be a disparity is the stormtroopers versus Ostroopen. And we'll have to see again how Metallic deals with that. Down on the bottom side, more rifles with uh, Stormtroopers, Command Carrier with Command Infantry, and a Ram 2 for the bottom side. On the side of Metallic, it looks like he's going to be going for the Ostroopen Command combo with the Fusiliers and the Pack 38. And on the top side, we do see a Panzer Shrek, so that could be one way to deal with this Ram 2 if he has one down on the bottom side as well. But in general, the only way you're going to be dealing with things like Stormtroopers and the Rifles is by bringing in IG-18s. But I guess you could exploit it quite hard in AI, in uh, Phase A uh, because Nicholas Frick is going to have a limited amount of artillery. But in Phase B and C, those IG-18s and any of your AT guns really tend to become quite hard to use. And you'll generally see that in the later phases, 88s will be used as like one shot kills rather than, you know, sustained map pressure because they won't have any sustained map pressure due to enemy artillery. So let me just speed up this deployment a little bit as it is seeming to take a while. Some of the deployments in these games that we've been watching have taken quite a long time. And I guess it's just a due to each player and how they work in the game but JU88 brought in at the start here 14 7 HE power bombs if this hits the mark that could really do a lot of damage to the convoy it looks like it was a bit premature there which is unfortunate if it had hit this mark there where all of this infantry was splitting up that could have given Metallic, a lot of map pressure, which is interesting to see. Like, I haven't really seen that tactic used before with the 716th when you bring out a JU-88 at the start of the game, but I could definitely see how it would work. It's a lot like the uh, Pathfinder in a sense that it would make all of the, the infantry unload, and then you can gain an advantage where you need to. And at the moment, it looks like Metallic's not going to be necessarily pushing very hard, into the town, he's actually kind of given that up to Metallic. So Metallic's going to be able to get his Ostroopen into position. On the bottom side, we do see a pack 40. So if the Ram 2 starts to head down to the bottom side, it might end up being picked off because there is pretty much no recon on both sides other than this Fusilier squad down on the bot here next to the, the pack 40. Lampanzer B2 has been brought up to the top side, that's going to be joining the Panzerstreck and Ostroopen as they 
move forwards. But Metallic's going to have to be careful here that these rifles don't just kill that Panzer Trek very quickly. But things off to a, a pretty slow start. No actual engagement just yet. And it seems as though both players are just securing as much ground as they can at the start of this. Still a 50-50 on the board. 25 pounder is aiming away. It looks like it's going to be aiming into the town. And a plus one has been found at the bottom side by Nicholas here. His command carrier and the rifles pushing into enemy territory. We do see a Lorraine brought in. Interesting choice. That's going to be the 1,600 range 27 HE power unit. And if you can, if you can get that on target onto this 25 pounder, that will do a lot of damage to Nicholas at the start of the game because removing the 25 pounder leads to a lot of opportunities with the Pack 38 um, IG combo that I was talking about. There is, of course, still 2-inch carriers to worry about, but these 2-inch carriers only have 700 meter range, so they are a lot less effective than 25 pounders. But the first damage coming down here onto these Ostrupen, thanks to the 25 pounder, it looks like the Pack 40 might find a shot into one of these units as well. Uh, just about misses the Bedford, but forces the rifles to unload. Fusiliers are going to now engage the rifles in the open. And we do still see the Lorraine and Flampanzer V2 on the way. Now that's one thing that you do have to consider when you're playing the 716th is just how slow your units are. So they do tend to take quite a long time to get to the front line. But down here, Metallic making the right move, moving his Pack 40 after it fired, because the 25 pounder almost immediately uh, tr has been like trying to go for the kill there. Not a single shell has landed just yet onto the Pack 40, but it would be only a, only a matter of time if that Pack 40 continued to fire. And you can see here the Metallic has actually turned off the HE on the Pack 40 so that it doesn't reveal itself by firing at infantry. The only issue on the bottom side here is if these Fusiliers don't deal with the rifles, every time that Pack 40 moves into the tree line, it's going to be spotted anyway. Panzer Lorraine is uh, finding. Uh, shots onto the 25 pounder can he get a nice kill shot there if that slightly overshoots its initial targeting it would have hit the mark but doesn't look like that's going to happen this time around good to see counter battery coming in from the start though he needs to secure the artillery game in order to have any chance of using support units like this IG-18 and this IJ-18 is a very good move now that the 25 pounder is being counter-batteried because that can quite simply deal with the rifles for you. So we do see the 2 inch carrier there, however that's only going to be able to provide smoke currently because if it moves up into range of the fusiliers the pack 40 could come into the tree line and kill it. ju 88 also flying around again Trying to find a place to put its 14 bombs. Looks like he's going for the kill onto the 25 pounder, which is probably a very good idea. Again, you just got to keep the pressure on this artillery where you can. Didn't do any damage though, just pinned it down. That's unfortunate. Fusiliers have moved forwards here and have bumped into the command carrier, the Piet squad, the rifles, and been pretty much churned up by the machine gun there but the IG still going ahead and aiming at the rifles going to be doing some more damage there a Panzer 39H has been brought up as a reinforcing unit as well which should allow him a bit more pressure to push around the corner and uh, take out this command carrier and what this Panzer 39H does is just allow you to do what the Pack 40 would do just a bit more with a bit more mobility um, of course, there is the Ram 2 that's still needed to be worried about. But uh, in general, Pack 40 should get the shot back onto the Ram 2 if the Ram 2 reveals itself. We'll have to wait and see because, of course, there is uh, the risk of artillery all the time onto the Pack 40. Now, I'm kind of surprised with the 25 pounder pin down here that the Pack 40 is not being used as well with its HE rounds to hit these rifles because it would help clean them up much quicker. 
But we can now finally see that the 25 pounder has taken some damage, three damage. It's not very much. Uh, but 237 points in the lead for Nicholas Frick at the moment, currently 50 50 overall. Uh, Pan Flam Panzer B2 has moved up here and is going to continue to. Looks like he originally flamed some rifles in this tree line and is now just moving forwards to find them once again. There is a six pounder, however, waiting on that angle, and if that gets told to fire, there could be a very good chance of a kill. So he's got line of sight, he's waiting to fire, Nicholas Frick gives the order and that B2 is going to have to fall back as soon as possible. First shot and second shot misses which should allow the B2 to get out of range. Um, two inch carrier has moved up here on towards the Ostrupen and that's going to start mortaring those and forcing them to fall back. So things still hanging around at 50-50, Panzer 39H can begin to move forwards. I really like this positioning of the Piat though from Nicholas Frick because it does cover the road with the 200 meter range so that's great. But both sides being pretty damn static at the moment. With the revealing of that six pounder the Lorraine is firing once again. So don't be surprised to see that Lorraine actually target the 25 pounder again if that starts firing. Ooh. One shot there from the Lorraine, taking the six pounder down to one health. And if that's completely dealt with, then this Flampanzer B2 is actually going to have a very good time in the top side here. Two inch carrier looks like it's uh, dropping some smoke for the rifles, maybe just trying to dissuade Metallic from moving up whilst the six pounder is pinned down. But in general, things still looking very even here. A IG-18 is being pulled up to the top side with some more Ostrupen. And we have, of course, even more Ostrupen moving to the top side of the town with some AA. So we're not in phase B yet. But a Plaque 37 is coming in to secure the air early on. And that's probably a good idea, actually, because in general... Like the third Canadian can get quite out of hand if they bring in a lot of mosquitoes. So you want to start building up your AA early with the 716th in order to counter those bombing strikes which can be very annoying moving into the later phases. Ostrupen here have managed to make the stormtroopers fall back with the help of the Panzer 39H. Six pounder however is moving through here and once that gets line of sight, I would not be surprised to see the Panzer 39 go down. Especially if the Panzer 39 is not covered by these Ostrupen because they are pinned by the 2-inch carriers and the 25-pounder. But as soon as the 25-pounder opens up, here goes the Lorraine again. Just trying to pick up that kill. Very, very important kill there. JU88 has come in with the uh, 14 bombs there. He's actually going to go for the bombing strike onto the 2-inch carrier. We do see the Panzer 39H here as well, finding shots onto the 6-pounder with the help of the Flak 36. They are going to pin that down and force it to fall back almost immediately. Really, really nice job there by Metallic. I definitely expected that Panzer 39 to go down, but well played for not letting that happen. The uh, Panzer Habitzer Lorraine is currently firing at the 6-pounder now. Just seeing if he, if he can secure that kill because again it would be nice in order to allow his Panzer to continue the pressure. Another Panzer 39 now rolling up to the top side to support his Ostruben, uh, Ostruben as he moves up. But Nicholas Frick not missing a trick as he does have Piats in some very nice locations. Like I especially like this one as I mentioned before because it's just in a really nice range for that road. And this one's also in a nice position as well because it allows vehicles to get close enough before it reveals itself. So Ostrupen, alongside the Panzer 39 and the IG-18, going to be forcing back those rifles. And we'll be able to make a little bit more ground towards the early phases of this game. We have now moved into Phase B. Still to, not too much happening across the board. I believe Metallic is just sort of Trying to secure his position. Currently reinforcing with two Verflammens and a Lorraine. 
Very interesting choice. I really like these uh, Verflamens actually because they have the 425 HE power napalm rockets. Um, but a second Lorraine, maybe a bit overkill. Um, or, or maybe not if the uh, second 25 pounder has already revealed itself. But here we go with the Lorraine again. Have a look at what Metallic can see. He can actually see it directly. That's why he can get such accurate shots onto that one. He's pinned it down. That's going to stop that fire support. This 25 pounder is opening up onto infantry on the bottom side. Probably going to be trying to clear out the IG-18 or even this pack 40 down here. Doing quite a lot of damage there. Down to two health already. Two shots. And that's a pack 40 going down there. I still feel like that pack 40 could have been using its HE earlier on. This terrain is now firing at the 6 pounder once again. We have the two Verflamens in position. He's going to have to find some decent targets for those though. As they do require quite a lot of uh, supply. Ooh, it looks like the Lorraine, the Lorraine did take out the 6 pounder here. But there is a Ram 2 now standing in the way of these tanks. So that both the Flam Panzer B2 and the Panzer 39H. Not going to be able to do much against the Ram 2. Panzer 39 is now firing at this rifle squad, I believe. One thing that Metallic can do is get the Flam Pans into this orchard and then flame out these rifles and gain a little bit of ground there. Because at the moment, as we can see, there is a plus one in favour of Metallic, which is something I wasn't expecting this early into the game. But either way, 50mm um, mortar is now being counter-batteried by the 2-inch mortar there. That 50mm mortar trying to pin down the rifles in the open with the help of the IG-18. The least Lorraines looks like they're going to be firing at the main road here. To me that's interesting, especially with the revealing of the new 25 pounder on the bottom side. I would expect uh, Metallic to move his Lorraines into range of that unless he's planning to use a Verflamen instead, which can be a lot more potent. No better word to describe the 716th, really. We're back to a 50-50. And just a slow game overall, so far. Rifles revealing themselves there to the Ostrupen, but the Ostrupen now getting absolutely chewed on by the 30 cal of the Ram 2, and the Sherman 3 is soon going to open up as well with its 50 cals and 30 cals. JU-88 coming in with the bombs. Going to be forcing the uh, Sherman 3 to fall back. There's also a HS-129 coming in. That's going to get transmission damage onto the Ram 2. We Ooh, a lovely kill onto the 2-inch mortar carrier there as well. Thanks to possibly the Lorraine. I'm not quite sure what that was. It might have actually been the B2. Uh, found line of sight there. Yes, indeed. Uh, Mosquito was brought in. Um, gets forced back by the Flak 36. That allows the uh, HS129B1 to remain in the air. However, no longer has any AP shells, so you should be uh, getting that out of here as quickly as possible. Now, the Ram 2 does find a shot onto the B2. They might, they might have also been. Actually, it looks like it was probably the 6 pounder, so sorry about that. Um, but yeah, pa Panzer 39 now engaging the Sherman 3. Not much of a match up there. And Panzer 39 just needs to leave. So, looks like the 2 inch mortar carrier has moved up on the bottom side, but the 50mm mortar of M Metallic still able to fire at the rifles in the open. So, let's see how these Lorraines work moving into this game because. The first one's currently very low on ammunition, only one shell left. The second one has obviously just arrived, and that is fully loaded. However, these need to find shots onto the 25-pounders, or they're generally pretty useless. Now, the thing that Nicholas Frick can do is keep his 25-pounders out of range altogether, because as you can see, they have 2,400-meter range. That's 800 more range than a Lorraine. And as long as you keep them out of that range, it can be very hard for the Lorraines to move forwards without revealing themselves to enemy forces. But either way, 25 pounder is going to be RT in the top side here. There's Ostrupen. 
and we're likely to see the Shermans come down here soon. One shot fired by the Verflammen. I'm not entirely sure what that was going for, but it looks like Metallic is trying to go for like a staggered approach with the use of these rockets. You can fire one at a time if you fire and then stop them, and then fire again and stop them. But yeah, that looks like a strategy that Metallic's going to be trying to use this game just to try and get those one-shot kills. Now where's the second Verflammen? Ah, there it is. It's down on this bottom side. And uh, one of those rockets has currently been used to napalm this area. So the rifle still being killed off in the open. I'm <laughs> Again, I'm surprised these haven't fallen back yet, but they are holding the front line forwards, which is keeping it 50-50. ME109G2R1 is going to go for a bombing strike, I think, towards the 25-pounder, maybe. Bumps into the Mosquito and now the Spitfire and it's probably going to get away. The Staghound AA did a lot of damage there causing the oil leak onto the ME109. We also saw the Ostrupen die in this top side but 88 has arrived. If that can get one shot onto the Sherman 3 he's going to be in a very good spot indeed. That's a very good trade like the Sherman 3 150 points, Black 41 135 points pays itself off by 15 points. He's got to find the kill though and there he does. Very nice. So now that if that 88 dies it's not so much of a big deal. The main risk with bringing in 88s is you bring them in and then they get pinned down and you don't end up using them or getting any kills with them. That is like the worst part of bringing in an 88. Oh this Lorraine, where's it going? That's dangerous moving through with an attack move order it looks like uh, Metallic's tried to do that there and it's just putting it in a really really bad position and the Verflammen did find the kill onto one of the rifle squads down here also pinned down the rifles here but if this gets pinned that's going to surrender and the Lorraine actually ends up surrendering to those rifles and really big micro mistake there from Metallic. So the Piet has come into the tree line, does get the kill onto the Panzer 39. That's going to preserve some of the rifles for now. But wow, you can't let your Lorraines die like that, especially when they have been actually pretty damn effective at counter-battering these 25-pounders. You need them to continue to do that throughout the rest of the game. Now the 25-pounders trying to take out the Flak 36. That Flak 36 revealing itself by attacking the infantry down here. Not ideal, but then again you can't really turn off the HE or it won't fire at aircraft either. Unless you want to micro it by turning it on and off whenever a plane comes in, but then you get start to get back into the swing of war game like you did with Seed. Um, but either way, 51% um, now Nicholas Frick. Uh, he is starting to build up his points again. It keeps flicking in and out of the 51 and 50%. Bomber coming in with the 6 10 HE power bombs. It's going to go straight for the pack 40, 75 mil. ME109G2R1. Going to be going for a dogfight with the Mosquito. And honestly, we might see the ME109 shoot down the Mosquito. Although a Spitfire coming in to stop that from happening. One would think at least. It looks like they're just going to dogfight for now. So the Flak 36 and Pack 40 now still hammering these rifles. This Flak 36 nearly used up all of its ammunition, honestly. Oh, has the ME109 got on the tail there? I feel like it might have, although the Staghound AA going to force the ME109 G2R1 to fall back and the Black 36 likewise onto the Spitfire. So I believe Metallic has made a bit of ground in the centre, which is where this is staying at a 50-50, because on either flank... Nicholas Frick is very close to actually breaking through. If he can get these 25-pounders 
to kill off the pack 40 on the bottom side he will gain a ton of ground down there and uh, definitely win the game and he knows it's there it's firing at him the whole time currently though the reason he's not probably arting it is because both his 25 pounds are out of ammunition what I would look for though is maybe the two inch carrier getting close enough to mortar that and it looks like that's what's going to happen there so flag 41 now engaging rifles in the top side as the Ostrupen reveal them and that's just going to continue with the HE shells going down there what we really need to see is some effective strikes from these Verflammens and then Metallic can really start to make some ground but with this 25 pounder being reloaded and especially out of range of the Lorraines I feel like that's just going to start putting the pain down onto Metallic and his infantry and fire support weapons and that could be a big problem. We do see an ouster come in from Nicholas Freg. that's likely to be forced to fall back by the 88. There we go, two shots. I'm not entirely sure how much that saw but we'll definitely pick up on quite a lot of these vehicles. 25 pounders currently firing at the Ostrupen in this tree line. Meta looks like Metallic's Ostrupen are getting engaged at close range here though by rifles. Pack 40 has arrived to have a go at the Sherman 3 but is in range of the 50 cal and that's going to force the Pack 40 to be quite inaccurate honestly and if Metallic doesn't fall that back straight away it's going to die to another direct hit of the Sherman 3. But double HS129 coming in Oh, look at this Air Force. Absolutely crazy. Both the Sherman 3 and the Ram 2 went down before the HS 129s got forced back by the Tri Polstins. Fantastic job there by Metallic getting those two kills with the HS 129s. Definitely helps pay for those um, with those very important kills. However, he can't just charge forwards infantry at this point because the tripolsons do stand in his way so he's going to need something a bit heavier and this is where something like a b1 would be very very good indeed um, he doesn't quite know about the wolverine but as soon as he spots something like a wolverine he can start to like rt it with the lorraines and that would be a decent way of uh, making that fall back because it's an open top vehicle suffers quite a lot of morale damage from artillery in general we are going to see this 25 pounder open up towards the flak 41 and that's no surprise that's exactly why he's going to be bringing them in it looks like the uh, panzer 39 there had a cheeky shot at the tripolsen the verflammen going to finish off the kills onto the rifles here now one thing that metallic just did was reveal the m10 and this at gun now if he marks that and brings over his other verflammen he could maybe try and get a really nice strike there because taking away the AT gun allows him to play around his own tanks a little bit better even though things like Panzer 39's and BT, uh, B2's aren't actually that great. But JU-88 is going to be coming in on the bottom side and the two ME-109 G2R1's and here comes the Mosquito and the Spitfires in reply. It seems as though Metallic left his JU-88 in the sky just a little bit too long there before he um, used it to fall back and uh, now we're going to be seeing the Spitfire get on the back of the ME-109 and this is going to be a horrid engagement for Metallic as he loses both of his ME-109 G2 R1s and the JU-88 really big win for Nicholas Frick in the air so that's going to cause the air cover that was there for the HS129 to disappear and uh, one bomb coming down there also going to help uh, deal with the Pioneers and Pioneer Führer that have dropped off in the open. So things look like they're starting to stack up in Nicholas Rex favour currently. The last of the bombs dropped there from the Mosquito. If this command carrier was driving forwards at the moment it would make all of these units surrender like if you had that command carrier on a fast move up the road he could have done that very very easily of course he still has to be worried about the pack 40 
But currently the Pack 40 is uh, behind the tree line and he would probably see it with the rifles if it was there. So Stormtroopers currently being wrecked there. Um, the Lorraine is trying to find shots onto some of the infantry. And we see the first, or probably many, Sextons as uh, he is starting to counter these 88s. So more rifles coming in onto the bottom side. That will reveal the location of the Pack 40. The Spitfire has actually revealed another 88 further back. And unless he gets his uh, Lorraines here on target, these 25 pounders are going to continue to put down the pain for the rest of the game. Pack 40 is going to pop one of the uh, Bedford trucks with the rifles, so got that killed there. Second rifle squad may be much luckier though but they are in range to do quite a lot of damage to the pack 40 and eventually kill it off up in the top side the SDK of Z is being used to engage the rifles and the pioneers and rifles here that engagement's happening but with the pioneers being within 100 meter range when they get lower morale that's going to cause a surrender a 52% territory lead for Nicholas he really needs to find some kills with these HS129s, however he's kind of flying into the hornet's nest at the moment with these two Tripolstons waiting for him. So one Sherman 3 took I think a couple of shots and then survived and it looks like the M10 is also going to survive here. Spitfire Mark 9 not going to be just enough to shoot down the first HS129 but Spitfire Mark 9 might be enough to take out the second and there we go. Or can he get, take out that HS129 as well? That would be pretty damn special from Nicholas Frick. And like I said before, without the um, support of the ME109 G2R1s that um, Metallic invested upon, um, those HS129s are a lot more vulnerable than they once were. So another IG-18 rolling up here. That's just trying to find line of sight onto some of these infantry. My, well, the Lorraines of Metallic are starting to get artied. And in the bottom side, this push of Pioneers and Fusiliers is going very well at the moment. The biggest issue here being the command carrier is actually running low on ammunition. So the Pack 40 did go down on the bottom side. However, these rifles now being hit by the 88 there. And plus one is now in Metallic's favour. So yeah, things are swinging backwards and forwards at the moment as small plays are being made across the map. But uh, at the moment, generally things going pretty well. Only 10 minutes left on the clock, however. So Nicholas Frick needs to make sure that he levels out this game and maintains his lead in order to win. Metallic just needs to continue with this plus one to win. So one of the Verflammen's now being reloaded. If he can make that hit the mark, then he might open up a salient. And vice versa with the 25 pounders, Nicholas Frick could also make a salient. Mosquito going to be dropping its bombs on top of the Verflammen. Oh, that was lucky that the bombs didn't make the Opal Blitz munition explode. Otherwise... Metallic might have lost that Verflam in there. But on the top side, the 88. It's not going to be killing off the Sherman today as it gets uh, taken out. And another ME109 G2R1. Going to do plenty of... Well, going to take plenty of damage and be shot down by the Spitfire Mark 9s. Although the, the favour was returned by the Flagvillings here. Mosquito again coming in with some more bombs. Gonna be trying to take out these pioneers. And on the bottom side, well, it's just a bunch of Ostrup at the moment with some fusiliers, and those rifles just made another unit of infantry surrender. So things aren't really looking good for Metallic. I think he had the right idea in bringing in the Lorraines because of how much I said that the third Canadian can focus on artillery. But I mean, losing one of them so soon 
and for no reason whatsoever. I think kind of stung Metallic. It, it cost him a lot of points, and, and now a fourth Lorraine being brought in. He does love his Lorraines. That's fair enough. I mean, people play each division differently. But as you can see, what's happening over here is the Pioneers and Ostrupen are struggling against the wave of forces heading towards them. The white truck here is coming in with some sappers. And we do see the Firefly on the bottom side. That can't fire at the uh, 88 at long range because it only has... I was going to say it only has AP, but actually due to it being a third Canadian Firefly, of course it has HE. So that could you know, do the fire position trick onto the ATA. I'm not sure how effective that would be, but it's worth a try maybe. Now this white truck just drove all the way through this town and you can't help but think that that white truck could have just unloaded here and used the Pioneer unit to engage the Ostrupen and win over the town. But with seven minutes to go, Nicholas Frick is pushing hard on the bottom side and that could lead to quite an interesting lead towards the end of the game. 25 pound is still firing away. We've also got the Sextons coming in now onto the 88. Assault Pioneers pushing towards this tree line. If they get within 100 meter range, those Ostrupen are going to be in a pretty bad spot. Looks like the Lorraine's going to come in there with a shot to save the day. However, once the command carrier arrives and the infantry are unloaded, it's going to be very hard for any of Metallic's infantry to sit in this tree line. And now the plus two for Metallic, or for 52%, um, oh, sorry, for Nicholas Frick. Bitfire going to be brought up to engage the G2 BR21, but there is still an 88 over here. This 37mm flak, actually, that needs to be reloaded on the top side. Now I often forget to reload my AA, and I think a lot of other people do as well. We're going to be seeing lots of bombs coming down onto that Lorraine, and the Lorraine's actually going to survive. So that's good for Metallic, but with now six minutes left on the clock, things aren't looking particularly great. He can bring up a Panzer B2 to the bottom side, but that's not going to deal with the Firefly. What he really needs is... Well, this HS129 to get the kill, that's one way to do it. But also, just bringing up an 88 and unloading it in range and hoping it gets the one shot because the HS129 there going to be absolutely annihilated by the air supremacy of Nicholas Frick now. And with the air engagements earlier in the game, you know, that did lead to a massive air advantage for Nicholas Frick. So those HS129s not being able to be used as effectively. So now 5 minutes and 20 seconds left on the clock. Nicholas Rick still controlling a lot of territory on the bottom side. And now we even see the 25 pounders directly hitting the Flak 41 there and almost making them fall back. But it seems as though Metallic has had his say and is going to surrender. 34 minutes and 54 seconds into the game. So that leads a, leaves a minor victory for Nicholas Frick in the first game. And you can see exactly why there Metallic had to surrender. 2,535 kills to 1,575 losses for Nicholas Frick. And then we have uh, Metallic here um, with the opposite, of course. And losing that many units, you can see it start to build up. The Canadian player had so many more units towards the end there. And even though a lot of the Lorraines were still alive, with them now being hit by the Air Force, he can no longer use them to counter the 25-pounders. And the 25-pounders, you know, the second one was sitting well out of range after it initially took damage. So that was pretty much life for the entire game afterwards. So kills for the Canadian player. 25-pounder took out the Pack 40 in IG-18. We saw a 6-pounder take out the Flam Panzer B2 in the top side. Staghound A8 did make the Lorraine surrender. This was a big micro mistake as it could have led to a bit more of a victory. But then the big thing is losing all of these planes. The ME109 G2R1s going down to the Spitfire Mark 9s and the Mosquito shooting down the JU88. 
Um, the Sherman 3 took out a Flak 88 in the top side, so that paid itself off, and the Spitfire there shooting down one of the HS129s. The second one went down to another Spitfire. Um, Firefly picking off that Panzer B2 in the bot there in, in one shot. And there was also the, the Sextons firing away towards the end, which did manage to pick up an IG-18. In terms of losses for the Canadians, they lost uh, a few units there to an Austrian squad. Um, the Lorraine took out two six-pounders, which is good to see. Definitely trying to use that correctly. Um, Verflammen got a few infantry kills, but probably didn't pay themselves off. And I think, it, honestly, there was a few things. Obviously, uh, losing the, the Lorraine was a big deal. Um, but there's other things like not reloading the AA and... Um, not reloading the Verflammens very effectively because these Verflammens, if you keep them reloaded, can fire volleys very quickly from my own experience. Um, so it was interesting that he didn't fire those as often as I thought he probably would and that would have definitely caused a lot more issues for Nicholas Frick's infantry. But there we have it. That is the first game in the best of three between Nicholas Frick and Metallic. Nicholas Frick taking the first game uh, needs to win the second one in order to move on to round two. Or Metallic has to come back and win two in a row in order to move on himself. So looking forward to that game. Hopefully you guys are too. Thanks for watching and I'll see you then. Goodbye.